Now I've had to turn down $50 million four times, four times, just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. Williams went on to explain that he had turned down $50 million not once, but four times, all in the name of protecting his integrity and what he referred to as his virgin hole. These comments left viewers stunned as they shed light on the lengths Williams went to maintain his boundaries and resist Diddy's partying temptations. Following the release of the interview, social media exploded with discussions and debates about the allegations made by Williams. The public was divided, with some expressing disbelief and others demanding further investigation into Cat's claims. Cat Williams hasn't been the only one to call out Diddy. Last year, 50 Cent went off on the mogul too. It was a night filled with anticipation as fans gathered at a concert venue in Europe to witness the legendary rapper 50 Cent take the stage. Little did they know that this night would be marked by controversy and shocking revelations. As the music blared and the crowd's energy reached its peak, 50 Cent seized the moment to address a topic that had been brewing beneath the surface for years, his strained relationship with fellow rapper, P. Diddy. In his words, that's why I don't be going to them puppy parties. Hug you from the front and the back at the same time? F you talking about? The audience stood frozen, their eyes locked on 50 Cent as he continued to express his discomfort with the atmosphere at Diddy's famous all-white parties. He said, look, if you're into that, you into that, I'm fine with it. Each to his own. I'm just saying this ain't my kind of party. It's uncomfortable. I think I belong in the girl's bathroom when shit like that is going on. The atmosphere grew increasingly tense as 50 Cent's words hung in the air. It was clear that he was not holding back, unafraid to voice his opinions on Diddy's parties and his perceived sexual orientation. This incident was just the latest chapter in the long-standing feud between 50 Cent and P. Diddy. Over the years, the two rappers have clashed, with 50 Cent often taking jabs at Diddy's sexuality, even going as far as labeling him as fruity on multiple occasions. The video captured Capturing 50 Cent's controversial remarks quickly spread across social media platforms, drawing a wave of reactions from viewers. Many questioned why he felt the need to insult others and speculated that he might be going through a midlife crisis. Back in 2018, 50 had also taken a similar jab at Diddy. It all started during a recent interview, when 50 Cent was asked about his jokes regarding Diddy's alleged sexuality. In his response, 50 Cent didn't hold back, stating that Diddy often says things that are fruity without even realizing it. He specifically mentioned an incident involving Fabulous, where Diddy said, No, but me and you. We ain't party. We need to party. These words left 50 Cent feeling uncomfortable and raised questions about Diddy's intentions. But that wasn't the only incident that fueled 50 Cent's accusations. He went on to reveal a shocking encounter that took place at Chris Lighty's wedding. According to 50 Cent, Diddy approached him and made a surprising offer. He would take him shopping. This statement left 50 Cent bewildered, and he couldn't help but question Diddy's motives. What did Diddy mean by this offer? Was it a harmless gesture or something more? The revelation of this shopping offer sent shockwaves through the media and ignited a firestorm of speculation. Fans and critics alike began to question Diddy's sexuality, and the rumors spread like wildfire. But what does Diddy have to say about all of this? Diddy seemed unfazed by the speculation. In fact, he even chuckled when asked about it during his appearance on The Breakfast Club. I thought he needed some clothes. I'm a nice guy, Diddy quipped, brushing off any insinuation of impropriety. Diddy admitted that he might not be the best at playing the pause game, a game that supposedly originated in Harlem, where people say pause whenever something they say seems gay. But he insisted that 50 Cent's fruity comment was not coming from a place of malice. In fact, he claimed that it was an act of love. I don't have no beef with Fifth. He loves me, Diddy declared. It was a bold statement, considering the public back and forth between the two. But Diddy seemed confident in his assertion. Unfortunately, DJ Envy, one of the hosts of The Breakfast Club, wasn't convinced. He challenged Diddy, asking if he truly believed that 50 Cent's actions were driven by love. Hold on, y'all can't see that he loves me? You really think that's hate? Diddy questioned, defending his stance. When you really break it down, you've been out here a long time. You know he loves me. Well, 50 hadn't stopped there. 50 Cent, known for his unfiltered and provocative nature, once took to Instagram to share a series of photos that would send shockwaves through the industry. With millions of followers eagerly awaiting his every move, 50 Cent's Instagram account has become a platform for him to express his opinions and stir up controversy. But this time, he took it to a whole new level. Over the years, 50 Cent never shied away from making bold statements and engaging in public feuds. From his infamous beef with fellow rapper Ja Rule to his ongoing feud with Floyd Mayweather, his social media presence has become synonymous with controversy. What he did with his Instagram posts was target Diddy and Rick Ross. The first photo showed the two music moguls standing close together at a star-studded event, their body language seemingly intimate. 
Accompanying the photo was a caption that read, Something ain't right here. What's really going on? This cryptic message left fans and followers puzzled, wondering what 50 Cent was insinuating. The speculation quickly spread like wildfire, with fans and celebrities alike weighing in on the controversy. Some defended Diddy and Rick Ross, dismissing the claims as baseless rumors. Others, however, couldn't help but question whether there was any truth to 50 Cent's shocking suggestion. But just as quickly as the posts appeared, they vanished from 50 Cent's Instagram feed. The rapper deleted the photos, leaving his followers in a state of confusion. Was this all just a publicity stunt? Or did 50 Cent genuinely believe there was something more to the story? We believe Cat Williams answers this question clearly here. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is, TG Jakes, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. Yep, he says all of them are gonna get it this year. Now, Cat didn't stop at Diddy. He also went for other high-profile celebrities. Let's turn our attention to the first explosive celebrity beef ignited by Cat Williams, his feud with the legendary comedian Chris Tucker. Williams didn't hold back when it came to Tucker, delivering scathing insults that left everyone stunned. He referred to the current version of Tucker as Epstein Island Chris Tucker, a reference to the controversial association with Jeffrey Epstein. Williams questioned the significance of Tucker being called Christmas by none other than Michael Jackson himself. This shocking attack on Tucker's reputation and friendship with the late pop icon sent shockwaves through the industry. Moving on to the next explosive celebrity beef in our story, we delve into Cat Williams' fiery feud with the renowned comedian and TV host, Steve Harvey. Williams didn't hold back his punches when it came to Harvey, launching a scathing attack on both his talent and appearance. He boldly claimed that Harvey couldn't be a movie star, emphasizing that out of the 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year, not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude who couldn't speak well and resembled Mr. Potato Head. Williams didn't shy away from speaking out against Weinstein, even before the allegations against him came to light. In a shocking revelation, Williams claimed that Weinstein offered to perform a sexual act on him in front of all his agency's people. He questioned how he was supposed to react to such an offer and emphasized that Weinstein was guilty of the actions he was accused of. This bold accusation against one of the most powerful figures in the industry sent shockwaves through Hollywood. Now let's turn our attention to the next explosive celebrity beef in our story, Cat Williams' feud with fellow comedian Michael Blackson. Williams didn't hold back when it came to criticizing Blackson's comedic abilities. He made a bold statement, suggesting that most comedians don't get booed enough, which led to someone like Blackson, who is a real African, resorting to a fake African accent. This scathing attack on Blackson's authenticity and comedic style sent shockwaves through the comedy community. Cat Williams feud with the multi-talented comedian, Cedric the Entertainer. Williams didn't hold back his punches when it came to Cedric, launching a scathing attack on his appearance and career. He mocked Cedric's physical appearance, likening him to a walrus, and questioned why he hadn't achieved movie star status despite his moniker as the entertainer. Williams also accused Cedric of stealing one of his jokes from 1998, adding fuel to the fire. This heated clash between Cat Williams and Cedric the Entertainer adds another layer of drama to this sensational story. Cat went all out on Kevin Hart. Everyone knows that Cat hasn't ever been a Hart fan, even Dave Chappelle knows it. Williams didn't hold back when it came to criticizing Hart's rise to fame. He questioned the authenticity of Hart's success, claiming that no one in Hollywood had a memory of a sold-out Kevin Hart show or a standing ovation at any comedy club. Williams alleged that every movie part Hart played was initially offered to him, but he turned them down due to his integrity. This bold accusation against one of the biggest names in comedy sent shockwaves through the industry. Cat Williams' feud with the talented actor and musician Jamie Foxx. In a surprising turn of events, Williams made a shocking allegation against Fox, claiming that the ailing actor was part of the Illuminati. He suggested that if he had the ability to buy access into the shadow organization like Fox allegedly did, his first act would be to steal the secret recipe to McDonald's french fries. All these might sound like surface level, but the story gets serious when it comes to Diddy's claims. I don't want to look at nothing I don't want to have because I, I know how blessed I am. If I look at it, I got it. Yeah. That's how Diddy be feeling. Now, come on, man, come on. Diddy's allegations. Savage, I'm a savage! Oh! I'm a savage! Whatever I want, I'm going to get! Whatever I want, I have to get! In November 2023, the world was rocked by the explosive allegations made by Diddy's ex-girlfriend, Cassie. In a lawsuit filed in New York, 
Cassie accused the music mogul of a decade-long cycle of abuse, violence, and sex trafficking. The shocking claims sent shockwaves through the industry and left fans and followers questioning the true nature of Diddy's character. Cassie, whose real name is Cassandra Ventura, had been in an on-again, off-again relationship with Diddy from 2007 to 2018. According to her complaint, the abuse began early on in their relationship but escalated over time. It was in September 2018, during a dinner where Cassie decided to fully end the relationship, that the alleged rape occurred. It all began in 2005 when Cassie, then just 19 years old, crossed paths with Diddy. At the time, she was a young and aspiring singer, while Diddy, 37 years old, was already a well-established figure in the music industry. Their paths collided, and little did Cassie know that her life was about to take a dark and twisted turn. Diddy, initially positioning himself as a father figure in Cassie's life, took advantage of her vulnerability. She had a boyfriend at the time, and Diddy was publicly dating Kim Porter. However, he began pursuing a romantic relationship with Cassie, slowly but surely pulling her into his web of control. In 2006, Cassie signed with Bad Boy Records, the label founded by Diddy in 1993. This marked the beginning of a tumultuous journey for her. As her career took off, Diddy's grip on her tightened. He commanded complete control over every aspect of her life, ensuring her inability to escape his hold. Cassie's life quickly became a nightmare. Diddy allegedly began providing her with copious amounts of drugs, plunging her into a painful struggle with substance abuse. He also took care of her housing and car, further solidifying his control over her. All aspects of Cassie's life were dictated by either Diddy or his management companies. But it didn't stop there. Diddy's alleged uncontrollable rage frequently turned violent, with Cassie bearing the brunt of his savagery. Many of these brutal beatings were witnessed by the people he employed, who stood by and did nothing. Cassie was trapped in a cycle of abuse, unable to break free from Diddy's clutches. To cover up the evidence of his violence, Diddy would hide Cassie in hotels for days at a time, allowing her bruises to heal. It was a sickening charade, a way for Diddy to maintain his public image while continuing to inflict harm on Cassie. One particularly horrifying incident occurred in 2009 when he allegedly stomped on her face, leaving her battered and bruised. He then forced her to hole up in a hotel room for a week, concealing the evidence of his brutality. As the abuse continued, Cassie found herself becoming numb to the pain and fear. She became entirely beholden to Diddy's demands, blindly following his instructions out of the terror of facing another vicious beating. Her spirit was broken, and her life was in shambles. But the horrors didn't end there. Cassie alleges that Diddy forced her to partake in forced encounters with sex workers, which he referred to as freak-offs or FOs. These encounters were always accompanied by a cocktail of drugs, including ecstasy, cocaine, GHB, ketamine, marijuana, and alcohol. Cassie's anxiety would often manifest in vomiting before these encounters, a clear sign of the trauma she was enduring. Despite multiple attempts to escape Diddy's clutches and break free from the cycle of abuse, Cassie found herself trapped. Diddy would send his employees to track her down, manipulating her into returning with threats that her career would suffer if she didn't comply. It was a never-ending nightmare, a vicious cycle that seemed impossible to escape. In 2011, Cassie briefly entered into a relationship with rapper Kid Cudi. When Diddy discovered their emails, he flew into a rage. He allegedly physically assaulted Cassie, hitting her several times and kicking her in the back as she tried to flee. The violence escalated to a terrifying level when Diddy threatened to blow up Kid Cudi's car. Shockingly, around the same time, the star's car exploded in his driveway. The timing was too coincidental to ignore, leaving many questioning the extent of Diddy's control and power. By 2017, Cassie had reached her breaking point. Determined to leave Diddy for good, she met with him in September 2018 in Malibu to discuss ending their relationship. Little did she know that this meeting would turn into a nightmare. After dinner, Diddy allegedly forced his way into her home and committed the most heinous act of all. He raped her. The trauma Cassie endured over the course of nearly a decade is unimaginable. While she has now escaped Diddy's control, the scars of the abuse will forever haunt her. She has required intensive medical and psychological care to begin the long journey of healing. In her lawsuit, Cassie claimed that Diddy forced his way into her home after the breakup and subjected her to a horrifying sexual assault. The details of the assault were graphic and disturbing, leaving no doubt about the severity of the allegations. Cassie also revealed that this was not an isolated incident, but rather part of a pattern of abuse and control that she endured throughout their relationship. As news of the lawsuit broke, Diddy's lawyer, Ben Raffman, vehemently denied the allegations, calling them offensive and outrageous. Raffman claimed that Cassie's demand for $30 million 
under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship, was nothing more than blatant blackmail. He further stated that despite Cassie withdrawing her initial threat, she had now resorted to filing a lawsuit filled with baseless and outrageous lies. However, Cassie's attorney, Douglas Wigdor, fired back, stating that Diddy had offered her eight figures to silence her and prevent the lawsuit from being filed. Wigdor commended Cassie for her bravery in rejecting Diddy's efforts and deciding to give a voice to all women who suffer in silence. The legal battle between the two parties was set to be a high-stakes showdown, with both sides firmly standing their ground. Just a day after Cassie filed her lawsuit, a surprising turn of events occurred. Diddy and Cassie announced that they had resolved the claims in the lawsuit to their mutual satisfaction. The terms of the agreement were not publicly released, leaving fans and followers speculating about what led to the sudden resolution. Some questioned whether a financial settlement had been reached, while others wondered if there were other factors at play. In response to the settlement, Braffman clarified Diddy's stance, emphasizing that settling a lawsuit does not equate to an admission of wrongdoing. He stated that Diddy's decision to settle did not undermine his denial of the claims, and he wished Cassie the best. This statement left many wondering about the true nature of the settlement and whether it was an attempt to avoid further scrutiny or damage to Diddy's reputation. The resolution of the lawsuit brought a temporary calm to the storm surrounding Diddy, but it was short-lived. Just a few days later, on November 23, 2023, another woman came forward with sexual assault allegations against the music mogul. The floodgate had opened, and Diddy found himself facing a barrage of accusations that threatened to unravel his legacy. As the scandal surrounding Sean Diddy Combs continued to unfold, another woman stepped forward with disturbing allegations against the music mogul. On November 23, 2023, Joy Dickerson Neal filed a lawsuit in the Manhattan Supreme Court, accusing Diddy of drugging and raping her during her time as a college student at Syracuse University in 1991. According to court documents obtained by People, Dickerson Neal claimed that she was the victim of revenge porn after Diddy allegedly recorded the assault and shared the tape with others in the music industry. The details of the alleged incident were horrifying, painting a picture of a young woman whose life was forever changed by a traumatic experience. Diddy wasted no time in denying the allegations, claiming that Dickerson Neal's story was fabricated and not credible. In a statement to People, a spokesperson for the rapper wrote, this last minute lawsuit is an example of how a well-intentioned law can be turned on its head. Miss Dickerson's 32-year-old story is made up and not credible. Mr. Combs never assaulted her and she implicates companies that did not exist. This is purely a money grab and nothing more. The timing of Dickerson Neal's lawsuit was significant, as it occurred just as the New York State Adult Survivors Act window was about to close. This law allowed survivors of sexual abuse to file lawsuits against their abusers, regardless of how much time had passed since the incident. Some speculated that Dickerson Neal's decision to come forward at this particular moment was strategic, taking advantage of the legal opportunity. The fallout from the sexual assault allegations against Sean Diddy Combs continued to reverberate through the entertainment industry. On November 28, 2023, the hip-hop TV network Revolt, which Diddy co-founded, made a surprising announcement via social media. They revealed that Diddy would no longer serve as the network's chairman, at least temporarily. The decision sent shockwaves through the industry, leaving many wondering about the implications for Diddy's career and the future of Revolt. A representative for the rapper clarified that his departure from the chairman position was temporary and that he had not been involved in the network's day-to-day -day operations previously. In a statement released by Revolt, they explained that Diddy's departure was aimed at ensuring that the network remained focused on its mission of creating meaningful content for the culture and amplifying the voices of all black people throughout the country and the African diaspora. The statement emphasized that Revolt's focus had always been on the collective journey and the shared efforts of the entire team. The public response to Diddy's temporary departure from Revolt was mixed. Some applauded the network's decision, viewing it as a necessary step in light of the serious allegations against Diddy. They believed that it was important for the network to distance itself from any association with someone facing such grave accusations. Others, however, questioned the timing and motives behind the decision. They wondered if it was merely a PR move to protect the network's reputation, or if there were deeper issues at play. Some expressed concern that Diddy's departure could have a negative impact on the network's future given his significant role in its founding and development. As the news spread, discussions surrounding the allegations against Diddy and the impact on his career intensified. The court of public opinion became a battleground of conflicting viewpoints, 
with some calling for a boycott of Diddy's music and business ventures, while others urged caution and the need for due process. Supporters of Diddy argued that he deserved the presumption of innocence until proven guilty and cautioned against rushing to judgment, based solely on allegations. They highlighted his contributions to the music industry and his philanthropic endeavors, emphasizing that his legacy should not be overshadowed by unproven accusations. Critics, on the other hand, believed that the allegations against Diddy were too serious to ignore. They called for accountability and justice, stressing the importance of believing survivors and creating an environment where they feel safe to come forward. The Hash Me Too movement and its impact on the entertainment industry were cited as examples of the need for change and the dismantling of systems that protect powerful individuals. The public response to Diddy's temporary departure from Revolt highlighted the broader conversation surrounding sexual assault, power dynamics, and accountability in the entertainment industry. It served as a reminder that allegations of this nature have far-reaching consequences, not only for the individuals involved, but also for the institutions and communities connected to them. In early December, the scandal surrounding Sean Diddy Combs took another shocking turn, as a fourth woman came forward with disturbing allegations against the music mogul. In a lawsuit filed in New York, a woman identified as Jane Doe accused Diddy, along with former Bad Boy Entertainment president Harve Pierre, and a third individual labeled as the third assailant, of sex trafficking and gang rape when she was just 17 years old. The details outlined in the filing were deeply disturbing. Jane Doe claimed that Pierre approached her at a lounge in Michigan and convinced her to take a private jet with him and the third assailant to Diddy's recording studio in New York City. Once she arrived, she alleged that she was given drugs and alcohol before being subjected to a vicious gang rape. These allegations sent shockwaves through the industry and the public, further tarnishing Diddy's reputation and raising serious questions about his character. The lawsuit shed light on a dark side of fame and power, exposing the potential abuses that can occur behind closed doors. Diddy wasted no time in denying the recent allegations against him. In a statement to People, he expressed his frustration and declared, Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently silently and watched people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. He vehemently denied the allegations, asserting that he did not commit any of the awful acts being alleged. The music mogul further expressed his belief that these allegations were made by individuals looking for a quick payday. He referred to them as sickening and accused them of attempting to tarnish his name and seek financial gain. Diddy made it clear that he would fight for his name, his family, and the truth. Coming back to Cat Williams, you see that it all makes sense. The Diddy claims, at least. The year 2024 has started with a lot of events already. From Epstein's release documents to this, who knows what next is in store.